I think, unfortunately, our third place guy. The brand new FIA GT series roars into action this weekend in France at the Paul Armagnac circuit in Nagaro. A packed grid of stellar cars, teams and drivers will compete throughout six rounds of 2013 in order to be the FIA GT series champion. There will be three classes this season, Pro Cup, Pro-Am Cup and Gentleman's Trophy. And one man who's definitely entering the Pro Cup is Sebastian Loeb, the nine times world rally champion, will be out in a McLaren. Uh, my hope is uh, to, to improve my driving on racing. Uh, for sure, I don't have a lot of experience. We are in an international championship with a lot of very good drivers, so uh, it will be, for me, important to, to see where I am in, 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 this, uh, in this high level and, uh, and try to improve my driving. Seb will be joined in his McLaren MP412C by factory McLaren driver Alvaro Parent. Meanwhile, in the sister car, Mike Parisi will be joined by Andreas Zuba and together should be challenging for the Pro Cup. HTP Gravity Charoux have entered three Mercedes SLSs for this season. In car number one is Maximilian Buch. I try to fight for, for some points, of course. I uh, try to be top five every weekend, but I'm quite confident and satisfied that we can fight for some points and having a good uh, championship. Alan Day will be Book's teammate. Afanasiev and Andreas Simonson are in number two. And car number three is driven by Petr Chiruz and Jan Stovacek. A great addition to the series of Phoenix Audi. The winners of last year's Nürburgring 24-hour race will field an Audi R8. Enzo Eid and Anthony Kumpen will be the drivers. The Audi should be strong here. We, we saw now in the dry conditions that the McLarens are really strong and the wet, uh, the Audis were strong. So we will see that the, the weather conditions will change, but uh, we are quite confident that we will be quite good. Continuing the Audi theme are WRT. They're fielding three R8s this year with Laurence Vanthor and Stefan Ortelli in the number 11 machine. This championship, the sprint series is uh, really something we are looking forward with uh, Laurence Vanthor, my teammate. Uh, not only because we won the Blanc Pain series, but because it's really uh, something we have to improve. We have to be better. The teams did a very good job during the winter for practicing pit stop. All the teams know better this championship. Don't forget that uh, last year there were some very strong teams who had a lot more, much more experience than us in the sprint series. So uh, definitely uh, we want to do well. Rene Rast and Nicky Mayer Melnoff will compete in the 12 car in the Pro-Am Cup whilst the other pro entry will be Frank Stippler and Edward Sandstrom. Another strong entry in the Pro Cup is the Door McLaren of Daniel Kilvitz and Nicholas Kenetic. Kenetic is aware it's going to be a tough season. It's a new car for me, it's my first time this weekend uh, in the car, we have never testing before. It's the first time with this team and the first time in this series and um, yeah, I hope we can, we can make a good start this weekend and then we must, we must look what the next race is. The German squad will be hoping to make a good impression this season. There's a strong Brazilian presence in the FIA GT Series this season, coming from BMW Team Brazil. Using a range of international and national motorsport stars, including XF1 driver Ricardo Zonta. This weekend, the first practice, I had some problems with my car. So I did only five, six laps. And uh, it's been quite difficult for, for me and for the Jimenez, the second driver, to, to adapt to this car. Is a new car for me, especially. Zonta will be joined in car 21 by Sergio Jimenez, whilst car zero will see five-time Brazilian stock car champion Caco Bueno race with Alan Coder. The second Brazilian entry this season comes in the form of a pair of Ford GTs from Road Drive. Claudio Ricci will be driving the number seven car. Alongside him, Matthias Stump. We think it's a 
big championship with big names here. We have other Brazilians here too. And it will be nice for all around the world that you can do a very good job here. The second car will enter the gentleman's trophy. Rajan Mascarello and Felipe Tozzo at the wheel. Seyfarth Motorsport will enter one Mercedes SLS this year for Jan Seyfarth and ex-Formula One driver Karun Chandok, who's looking forward to having a roof over his head. Yeah, it's a real eye-opener coming into this championship. There's a lot of good drivers and teams, so uh, it'll take a little bit of learning. I think the first two races, uh, two race weekends, but you know, I've got a good teammate in Jan Seyfarth and uh, the team are working really hard. So, uh, you know, I've come here with no testing. So, uh, real baptism of fire, but I'm enjoying it. I think it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and we'll see where we end up. It'll be a steep learning curve for Seyfarth and Chanduk this season as they enter the Pro Cup. BMW Sports Trophy Team India field a BMW Z4 in the Pro-Am Cup this year. Frenchman Julien Juice will be joined by Indian driver Aman Ibrahim. We haven't done much running because of the weather has been crazy. Uh, I've only managed to uh, be, uh, get some laps in the wet and unfortunately every time I've gotten it, it's been well not dry, so I've missed out on the dry. So, uh, yeah, if it stays dry, I'm going straight to qualifying without doing a single lap on this track, uh, around this track in the dry, but it should be fun. Uh, in the end, to do the best we can, get the best out of my, uh, both Julian and myself and to get the best out of the car uh, and get in a good position for the race tomorrow, you know, and see what comes out of that. Portuguese squad Nova driver will enter an Audi R8 this year as they make the step up to the FIA GT Series. Team boss Cesar Campanico will race alongside compatriot Carlos Vieira. Uh, our team is 100% Portuguese. Cesar has the experience from the last year and I think it will be a big help for me to, to know the circuits. And um, well, hopefully we will do it good for the Pro-Am um, class. Expect Nova driver to be towards the front. Last year's GT3 champion Dominic Bauman makes the step up to FIA GT Series this season with Grasa Lamborghini. Our expectations are not really high. Uh, it was really short planned uh, one week ago. So for the team and for the drivers, it's everything quite new. Uh, the car is really great to drive uh, today or th this weekend. I don't know if we can score some points. We are really happy. Soft Rev Ferrari will field two 458s this weekend. Gerard Tonelli will share with ex-French international goalkeeper Fabian Barthez. But uh, I'm here for enjoy really, and uh, it's uh, it's my second house here. You know the Nogaro. Uh, I start uh, to listen to the driver here, and um, sorry, and um, I'm here for enjoy. In the sister car, Jean-Luc Bubulik will share with GT expert Soil Ayari. And finally, RJ and Nissan will field two cars this season, one for Mark Schorsitzky and Wolfgang Wright. The pair are very recent graduates from Nissan's GT Academy program, and Wright knows it'll be a tough year. We are still learning, of course. So uh, between the 10th and the 15th position, uh, it's the target for uh, this first race. In the sister car, experienced racer Alex Buncombe will join Lucas Ordonez. So that's the lineup for this year. All that's left now is the racing. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to France for the first round of the 2013 FIA GT Series. It's the qualifying race that we've got coming up for you today from the Paul Armagnac circuit down in the southwest of France. My name is Jack Nichols. I'm here in the commentary box, and alongside me is John Watson. There's the big story of the championship. Alvaro Parent in the car. He is sharing that McLaren with Sebastian Loeb, the nine times world rally champion. It's fantastic to have him on board. Well, I mean, the, you, you look at the biggest names in the history of motorsport, Sebastian Loeb is right amongst them, and he's still an active rally driver in a sense, but he's not going to have a co-driver here today in the car with him. He's all on his own with a field of 22 other cars, and that's while he has done Le Mans, a 24-hour race. This is a sprint race on a very much different style of circuit to Le Mans. So it's a, a big, big challenge for Sebastian Loeb to... to Address, he said in the preview there, that he wants to learn to be a racing driver. It's a, it's a vertical curve for him, and the eyes of France in particular, but the world in general, are on that man right now. So here you can see the cars making their way around on the formation lap. The grid is thus. On pole position is the number 12 Belgian Audi Club Team WRT R8 of René Rast. And alongside him on the front row, as we've already seen, Alvaro Parent. Row two, we've got another Audi. It's... 
Edward Sandstrom and Lawrence Van Thor. In fact, it's two WRT Audis on the second row of the grid. Then we get the first of our Nissans, which is very good to see. BMW Z4, started by Alan Cordera, is going to be very entertaining as well. Top, top drivers from Brazil have come to the FIA GT Series this year. And there's the other car, Sergio Jimenez, driving that one. Alan Day starting in ninth place. Then we've got the Lamborghini in the field, started by Harry Project. We've got Jay Seyfarth and Karun Chandok out there, the ex-Formula 1 driver in a Mercedes as well. Towards the back, we've got Shosinski and Reap, who are going to be in the other Nissan. Cesar Campanico is 33 today, and unfortunately for him, and a bit of an early birthday present yesterday was a 10-place grid penalty, so he's going to be starting down in 15th place, where he qualified in 5th. And bringing up the rear of the field, we've got Jan Stovacek starting that HTP Gravity Chiroux machine. So a one-hour race to start the qualifying race of the 2013 FIA GT Series is go. When the lights go out, we wait for it. On pole position is Rene Rast as they head off towards the first corner then. It's not a great start from Alvaro Parent. It looks like Sandstrom has made his way up into second place. Parent's going to try and hold it all the way around the outside and does so. Running wide towards the back is one of the HTP Gravity Chiroux cars. He comes back on board just in front. That's Andre Simonson at the wheel. And who is that off? Oh, that's a shame. Stefan Ortelli, the low Local driver, the Frenchman, out of the race by the looks of it at the first corner. Well, he just got squeezed, too much traffic going into turn two. Contact, well, Adi in the gravel trap, and that car is out. It looks like it, so battles throughout the field at the moment, but it looks as though Rene Rast has managed to hold the lead as they head down towards turn nine. There's the door, Motorsport, McLaren getting pushed onto the grass. Bodywork, bodywork flying as the cars came through turn six onto the straight. Don't know whose bodywork it is, but we'll get a glimpse in a second. So down in two. The turn seven hairpin for the first time they come. Here's a little look at the inside from the door. That's going to be contact in there, isn't there? Yes, it's a spin. And once again, it's Andres Simonson who's involved. And a real shame there because that looks like it could be permanent damage for the 30 car of Sohil Ayari. And that car's got radiator damage. Yeah. Water's flowing from the right-hand side of the car. It must have been the Ferrari who we saw the bodywork coming up, coming up through turn six. But as they come across to complete lap one, it's very close to the leader. The they're weaving, trying to get some heat into the tyres. The safety car, though, has been deployed. So let's see if we can uh, spot exactly what happens. There you can see Alan Coderre right on the inside. Vanthor's all the way out there on the outside going into turn two. A bit of dust kicked up on the outside. Now, we want to keep an eye on the 11 Audi, which is the third Audi just there. Oh, yeah, Kader gets into the side of him and sends him spinning around. We, you can see that quite clearly, actually, whilst we were watching Andreas Simerson going wide at the back. That was where the contact occurred. So this was uh, the Ferrari coming down. The McLaren had a little look at the inside here. Whereas the, the Ferrari's hidden in behind the McLaren and just clouts the back of the... Andres Simonson, Gravity Chiroux's machine, and you can see the... I mean, it's, it's just, just a it's, it's just, just like an eruption. So we're on board with Alvaro Parent as the safety car comes in and the race gets back underway here at Nagaro. Parent hasn't got a great restart. Rene Rast has dealt with that very nicely and has a healthy gap as they come across the line. Half a second. There is Mike Parisi now battling with uh, Jay Seyfarth coming into the first corner. Rene Rast beginning to pull away. Three tenths of a second quicker than Alvaro Parent in that first sector alone. So the gap is up to eight tenths of a second as they come down towards the hairpin. There's battles gone, going on towards the back here. And Alex Bunkerman, the Nissan, right over the back of the BMW, had a thought about looking down the inside, choose to go back to the left-hand side to give him space to get the Nissan slowed down, but strong performance on this Nissan GT Academy car. As we go back on board with second-place man Alvaro Parent towards the final two corners at 13 and 14. Parent's uh, an expert McLaren driver, isn't he? He was part of the development process of the whole car and very highly regarded in working. Absolutely, he is a, an outstanding driver in my opinion and uh, he's probably the driver who's had the most mileage of any in an M McLaren MP4 12C to give it its full title. Very, very close between the two of them as they come into this back section where the circuit winds in on itself before they accelerate down towards the start finish line. There's third place man Edward Sandstrom. He's an experienced Audi driver as well. And here's another attack from Alvaro Perez. Sparks flying from the front of Rene Raskar, and he very cleverly holds on and turns into the corner at the very last minute to block off any chance of a cutback from Alvaro Perez. But I think Alvaro is going to have his work cut out to get past Rene Rast here because Rene is used to very close racing. He's won the Porsche Super Cup the last three years in a row. There's his teammate, Mert Melnoff, looking a little nervous.
but across the line they come. Half a second still separating Rast and Parent. It's been like that pretty much non-stop. And uh, here is, look how hard Mike Parisi is having to defend now. And, well, they've all, they've both got past Alex Bunkham at some point. Here comes Jay Safarth around the outside of Mike Parisi. Brave Safarth pass. up into fifth place. I'm not quite sure what's happened to Alex Bunkham, though, because he was up there, wasn't he? In yeah, fifth he, was position. In, he was in sixth place. Now he's dropped back down to seventh. So there is the Nissan we're seeing it behind Mike Parisi getting held up in fact by Mike Parisi It's actually maybe Mike Parisi is the driver and he's run very very oh. wide and there's contact But something is wrong with Parisi's car. He's dropped back now behind Buncombe. Buncombe's back up to sixth place Parisi's down to seventh and uh, that little bit of contact there may have been something that's maybe as simple as a tyre problem, but there, no, Bunkham coming right, under front pressure. Right puncture, front right yep. puncture for Mike Parisi, that's the problem. Alex Buncombe now is having to go defensive because Harry Project is trying to get past him. Harry Project running in the Grasser Lamborghini, the team run and set up very late really by Gottfried Grasser. They weren't planning on entering this series until about a week ago. But that's a real shame for Mike Parisi because that's going to put him back on the grid for the main race because he'll have to pit to change that front right puncture. Luckily, these guys are very well trained with their pit stop, but he will have to still come back in to do his mandatory pit stop. That's the real disappointment for Parisi as he fires the car up and heads away again. Here's the battle for the lead again, and Rene Rast knows if he just holds that inside line, he'll, he'll be all right. Parent unable to find a way past just yet. Well, here's Fabian Bartes getting past Felipe Totto. A little bit of rubbing on the doors there, but finally Bartes is through and up into the lead of the gentleman's trophy class. Alvaro Parent needs, now he's, I think he's quite well placed this time, he's closer than he was on other occasions. Can he get alongside before the brakes and maybe do something? This is his best shot to date. But Rene Ras surely will just hold the inside line and force Parent to go around the outside. Parent gets the cutback, but that'll give him the, oh, he has to dab on the brakes there, going into the kink at eight. Very, very close racing between the two of them. And there's Alex Buncombe then, he's in sixth position, Jay Seyfarth up ahead is in fifth position the pit stop window is open then so from now on drivers can come in to change all four tires and swap the drivers as well so seeing who will come in first will be interesting well the first two in cars is, coming in already yep, Enzo Eid that is coming into the pits I believe as he pulls in as Stefano Telli heads back out onto the race circuit quite close to uh, picking up the number one Mercedes there We've got a problem here, haven't we, for uh, Frank Stimpler. We're taking it very easy in the pit lane. So I think, unfortunately, our third-place car is in a little bit of trouble now. Sebastian, Sebastian Lowe is getting ready. getting ready, then, to take over. Look, Parent right on the back of the Audi coming down. He's going to try and pull up alongside. He's going to have to go the very long way around. Renny Rass is mega on the brakes. And I'll get him literally on the outside of the Audi. Again, hasn't got the space to make it stick. He's going to have a little nose towards the inside line. Look how close these two are running. Fantastic onboard pictures there. It shows you just how tough it is to race one of these GT cars around Nagaro under the Dunlop Bridge now. Down a few gears on the paddle shift gearbox. Well, there's a problem. Oh, now that was certainly a penalty for driving. Not only does he drive across it on the entry, he goes back over the white line to swing into the pits. Yeah. Well, do you know, I mean, how basic is that? Julien Juice might be in a little bit of trouble there because cutting the uh, pit lane entry is definitely not allowed. In the pits comes Rene Ras then to hand over to Nicky Mayer Melnoff. WRT, very strong, but Parent has clear air. Yeah, Parent's got clear air, but he hasn't got a lot of time to spare. He, by the time he completes this lap, he's going to be just about 10 seconds or 15 seconds within the pit stop window closing. Well, here's the pit stop going on. Just one more wheel to go. Yeah, there he goes. Watch the white line. Oh, he just about gets it in. So on the brakes, really nails the brakes, turning into the left right to get on the pit lane. So this is the big moment in the race so far. Into the pits comes Alvaro Perrin. Can they get the McLaren in and out before the Audi comes past? That's going to be the big task. In comes Lowe. Remember Look at this, great view. In his earlier life, Sebastian Loeb was a gymnast. And he is mega, mega fit and supple. And uh, you could just see him getting into the car. I mean, it was just poetry in motion, the way he just got in. They've no doubt practiced this many, many times before they come to Navarro. Tightness down the belts. He's happy. 
Left front's going to go on. There it is. I think, I think Matt Mountoff has done this, you know. He's coming down the start finish straight now. Loeb heads out, but it's comfortable for Nicky Matt Mountoff. The Sebastian Loeb racing team, very, very good, very professional outfit, but they don't have the tyre changing experience of the WRT squad. And Sebastian Loeb then comes out in second place. Mayor Mountoff leads, and I think it'll be Karun Chandok in third place. It'll be interesting to see how Karun Chandok gets on, because first weekend in his racing career internationally, he's ever raced with a roof on. Left foot braking here, John. So uh, what, what was that all about? A lot of the well, single-seater drivers will be right foot. Yes, no, a lot of single-seater drivers today are left foot as well. But in the case of a GT car, the majority of drivers are, are right foot brakers. Sebastian Loeb is a rally driver by profession. And all the braking done by a rally driver is left foot, except when you use your hand to pull the handbrake on and your left foot to do this. So, I mean, it's a second nature to him. He just drives with two feet. He doesn't even have to think about it. Watch his feet on the throttle now, full throttle, off it again to balance the steering and the throttle on the brakes. I mean, it's just completely natural for Sebastian Loeb to, to do what we're just watching from the cockpit camera shot. So there's Alvaro Perrin little wave the battle that we have enjoyed up until the round of pit stops now it's effectively part two but with two different drivers down towards the first corner they come then the gap is down to just six tenths of a second and now we're going to see sebastian Loeb. he wanted to come here to learn to be a racing driver and there's no more crucial skill than overtaking for the lead of the race when you're a racing driver on board we go with the nine times world rally champion the rear right axle there for Stefan Ortelli, or sorry, the rear right bodywork. That's been hit, been hit pretty uh, severely, yeah, so that's bodywork rubbing as we go back to the lead, to the paddle for the lead. And Loeb, look at that on the brakes, almost getting alongside, yes, he's, got and he's trying to go around the outside of the hairpin, Mayor Mounoff holds it in there, he runs him right towards the outside of the circuit, and Mayor Mounoff holds on for the moment. That was, uh, that was close. I think, I think, I mean, for a fraction of a second, I think Sebastian Loeb may well have had the nose of the McLaren ahead of the nose of the Audi, but he was on the outside, and again, running close. I don't think they had any contact, but you couldn't have had much space between these two cars. And this is uh, Andres Suba getting all wiggly as he tries to go past Wolfgang Wright. And that what is, are they doing uh, way down in 15th? Obviously, I know yeah. the puncture for Mike Parisi, but I thought they might have been able to do a little bit more than that. Anyway, Andreas Zuber down in 15th. Up Team Boss, second. Yeah. Down towards the hairpin they come. And Mehmanov needs to cover the inside line because Loeb's going to put it there. And I'm afraid that's going to be the lead of the race for Sebastian Loeb. Is it? No. Well, Mehmanov. <laughs> <laughs> well what, and truly squeezed. I'm going down to Park Family to do the interviews with the drivers <laughs> the first three places. And uh, I will love to see the body action between the two Audi and the two McLaren drivers because they'll have tales to tell. Absolutely. There'll I mean, be a lot of if, and, or buts in their summaries of their races. Mayor Mounoff needed to hold the inside line earlier, didn't he? We, we could see it coming and we've seen on the last lap how good Loeb was on the brakes. There is Ortelli. Sounds like we're getting some tyres changed on that car. And then he may well head back out because get to the end of the race and, you know, it'll give you grid position for tomorrow, which if you start 16th or 20th, it could make a difference. And we're going to see a replay. Well, well this is just the rear right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a big smack in the right rear of the car. Then he runs very wide yeah. going Whoa, through turn there he goes. nine. And uh, he just pivots around and the car spins through 360 degrees. Here comes Sebastian Loeb now, again, to the outside, he looks. But he's not going to, well, he's going to try and go around the outside again. We know what Mayor Mernoff's going to do here. He's going to squeeze him onto the grass, which, if anything, putting Loeb onto the grass might give him an advantage as they come and do the double left-hander. And, of course, what Mayor Mernoff does, he just puts the car down the inside, precludes Sebastian Loeb from trying to come back at him, then this short run out of turn 10 down at 11 and 12 nowhere really to pass unless you are absolutely alongside here we go again down oh the inside. here's the dummy the dummy from Loeb but Mayor Manoff sees it coming is that more than two oh, he moves moves inside inside down. Down. he's gone got this time Sebastian Loeb takes the lead of the first round of the FIA GT series. Mayor Mounoff was too busy looking in his mirrors, too busy changing his line. He locked up, ran wide, and Sebastian Loeb is into the lead. About time two, I think, from the McLaren's perspective. Let's look at the replay. So, Mayor Mounoff was on the outside. He moved back to the outside, almost got caught out by the... Well, did get caught out. Couldn't get it stopped, could he? 
Chapman was a dip, sort of a double dummy, but it meant that the Audi slightly overran the corner. He didn't get the apex, and that allowed Loeb the opportunity to cut back under. Oh, oh that's Nissan a man on Ibrahim and, and, and Lucas Ordonez. So those two have, I presume, come together at turn seven. I mean, that, that pretty much will be. I don't think you need to be Jessica Fletcher to figure that out. A, probably a puncture there as well. Here we go. Ordonez. Yeah, down the not inside. Really close enough, is he? And uh, is the Audi going to. The Audi just drives down. And, uh, well, you know, when you're so far wide and you cut across. I don't know what the regulation is in GT racing regarding how far up or how far back a car is going to be to have to concede the corner, but it's certainly in Formula One terms, the Nissan had the corner in that case. Here's the second place battle then, and really it's one chance, it's now or never I'd say for Maximilian Buch. Maybe going to try and force an error from the ID driver, as we saw Sebastian Loeb do some minutes ago, but no he's not able to do it, but he is, ooh, we just got the nose almost to the tail of the ID as they swept into turn eight. But these two aren't going to grab the headlines. The man who is going to grab the headlines is going to be Sebastian Loeb. The nine times World Rally Champion sees the checkered flag and wins the qualifying race here at Nagaro. Second place just for Nicky Mermelnov. Only a tenth of a second between them as they cross the line. Third place, Maximilian Buch in the HTP Gravity Charouze Mercedes. Fourth position is going to be Anthony Kumpen. And he's got a bit of traffic in front of him, but that's not going to cause him too much problems. Fourth place for Kumpen in the Audi. Fifth place for Carlos Vieira in the Audi. Strong performance from Nova Driver. Very, very good to see the Portuguese squad doing so well. Karun Chandok will come home in sixth place. But Sebastian Loeb takes the win. The applause from all around the circuit. And we can now hear from Sebastian Loeb. He's down in Parc Ferme. John Watson's got him. Sebastian, fantastic overtake. Great race. 35 laps to get it done, but you did it. Yeah, it was complicated to overtake this Audi because there are really... Well done, man. Good job. Good fight. They are really quick in the slow paths. And uh, with, uh, in the straight, we could have some opportunity, but they were closing the, the door every time. So... We had to, to fight hard, and uh, finally, it's a, a nice win for our first race with Alvaro, which is just here. So a great job, congratulations. But you know, you've dominated World Rally for nine years, you know, you're going to dominate this as well. Uh, it's uh, only the first race, so we have to continue to work, and uh, it will not be like this every time for sure. We have to, to work and fight, but uh, Alvaro has done a great job. He was at the contact all the, the first part of the race, and uh, he gave me the car the second place we, we could overtake so it was a great job fantastic well done congratulations and we can hear now from Alvaro he's with John Alvaro you had to work so hard to try and get past René Rass but your teammate he's a bit of a novice he did a superb pass into the straight yes he did you know uh, uh, well it was a whole stint for me behind René he was uh, very intelligent I tried to to pass him in various places it was, it was not possible, uh, but, uh, but you know, a good race. And then uh, Seb, what a fantastic pass, you know, uh, into the hairpin. It's really, really proud. And all the work we've been doing is paid off today. Well, uh, more important tomorrow, but, uh, but yeah, it's great. Excellent. Well done. Thank you, Alvaro. So we can now hear from Maximilian Buk. Now he's with Watty. Maximilian, you were closing on second place. We thought you were going to get it in the last lap. Um, I thought it too. But I didn't want to push too much because I was on P3. I want to uh, keep the position for the for the uh, race tomorrow. I mean, it's only the qualifying race, but still a good result for us. And I think P3 is not too bad. I think P3 is pretty good. Alan, how did you enjoy it? Well, first race in GTA in my life. The, t the start actually was pretty tough for me because first time I'm really, I didn't expect so much pushing and so much aggress aggression uh, on the start. But um, after that was was okay. The team did a really good job on pit stop. Maxi did a really good stand on his his half of the race, and I'm pretty happy. Congratulations, guys! Well done. Thank you. Thank you. So here's a look at the results. Sebastian Loeb racing, taking the win with Sebastian Loeb and Alvaro Perent at the wheel. Three Audis in the top five. It's a circuit that really suits them. Nicky Mayer, Melnhoff, and Rene Rast in second place. Maximilian Buch and Alan Day in third position. Anthony Kumpen and Enzo Weed, very, very strong performance from them. Kumpen will be starting that car tomorrow, so expect that to perhaps climb forward. That 25-second gap you can see from third to fourth, not really representative, I don't think, of the pace. 
Kaka Bueno and Ricardo Zonza, very excited to see them starting a little bit higher up in the field tomorrow. And unfortunately, we had a few troubles out there for some of the Audis and uh, some of the Ferraris retiring as well. Gerard Tonelli winning him and Fabian Barthez winning the Gentleman's Trophy class after Loeb won the Pro class and Mayor Mounoff and Rast won the Pro-Am class. So there onto the podium to wave to the crowd are Alvaro Parent and Sebastian Loeb. No doubt the fans will be flooding to Nagaro to try and see their man Sebastian Loeb take victory tomorrow as well. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first main race of the 2013 FIA GT Series. We're here in France at the Circuit de Paul Armagnac in Nagaro for the opening round of this six-round season. The weather, as you can see, is a little bit wet. The rain has now started again by the looks of things. It's been on and off all day, mainly on, it has to be said, but there's plenty of hardy fans who have come out for this traditional coup de pack weekend, the Easter trophy here in the southwest of France. 11 degrees, the air temperature, you can see it's pretty chilly. So the lights are off on the safety car with 55 minutes to go. The race starting in the rain behind the safety car, but now we've got racing proper. Sebastian Loeb leads the main race here at Nagaro across the line. Nicky Mermanov is coming with him. The BMWs are already fanning out, and in fact, that's an attack on Karun Chandok going into the first corner, and it looks like already uh, Kaka Bueno has made it past Karun Chandok. As they come through, yes, Bueno ahead of Chandok, who's now coming under pressure from Zonta, and Andreas Zuber is right with him, but Sebastian Loeb it is, who's in the lead of the race, and is starting to just pull away a little bit. Look at the conditions down there at turn four. Chandok really struggling to find the grip. Look, there is number 11, Stefano Telli, slicing his way past the 32 machine, started by Wolfgang Wright, and we go on board now with Ortelli. In front of him is the Grasser Racing Lamborghini, started by Dominic Bauman. As we go back to the lead through turn five, and Nicky Mayer may have, may have, well, it's showing three quarters of a second. It looked slightly less than that as they go through turn five. And uh, Nicky Mayer Menhoff we may well try, as the BMW does get alongside the ID in turn five. Oh, side swipes it. Oh, that was so close. I don't know how Carlos Vieira held on to that one. I'm not sure if there was contact, I think. There was very okay. slight contact, but in these conditions, it only needs that slight contact just to boost the car sideways. Great job in recovering it, but more so in maintaining his position. And also Ricardo Zontra is coming under pressure. Here comes Andres Zuber up the inside. He's not close enough into the turn seven hairpin as he darts out of the spray to have a little look, but Carlos Vieira, I don't know how he managed to hold on to that in these wet and slippery conditions. And behind Karun Chandok is still holding on to that ninth place. Sebastian Loeb has just set the fastest first sector of anyone, but Nicky Mermanov responds with the fastest middle sector of anyone. Impressive driving this from Mermanov, you have to yes, say. Yes, I think, I mean, he, he got a tough lesson, does it dives the four dives on the inside of Karun Chandok. Goes through the puddle, the test up on his way past. Yeah. Ch Chandok finds more grip around the outside, a little bit of rubbing, and Stump is through. Chandok's going to lose out now as well to the car behind of Sergei Afanasyev, who comes through as well. So Chandok drops down to 11th place. Here's a look at the replay then, so it's the 14 Nova driver car. Oh, we gave him a little gentle rub. Nothing, I mean, just nothing that would have been, uh, barely you would have seen it in the paintwork, but enough in these conditions just to swing the Audi's tail out. You know, this is the rear view shot, which we've got on the back of uh, Karun Chandok, I believe, coming through the long right-hander. That's Stefan Ortelli behind. Battle over 11th place still. Ortelli's got past Bauman on this lap and will soon be trying to get past Karun into the final corner and Ortelli takes a wider line in this should give him the opportunity coming down towards turn one Chandok knows it goes defensive Ortelli still tries to find the inside line into one and he should have got that job done I think yeah well, I think he got it on pretty comfortably yeah. well not pretty he got it done that let's leave it there oh, and the BMW of the India team India car off onto the grass that's Aman Ibrahim down at turn four so Maybe some contact somewhere. Zonta has to go defensive now. This is cut back to the battle for sixth place, seventh place, sorry. And Andreas Zuber's got it done on the brakes. Good move. And here comes Afanasiev to go past Stumpf behind. Stumpf gets the cutback, does he? No. 
And here comes Afanasiev up the inside. A little bit of a contact between him and Ricardo Zonta. Zonta holds it on and then moves across on Afanasiev. That was a little bit rude, perhaps, from Zonta as they come out onto the back straight. And Mateusz Stump is going to want to take both of them. Stump's pushed onto the grass. I don't think Afanasiev knew he was there as they head down towards turn seven. Dominic Bauman in the Lamborghini on the right hand side will try and take advantage of that, but he's not close enough. After all that, no positions change, but that was a, a big moment for Afanasiev. I've got our heart rate going, didn't it? <laughs> Here's a look at the replay. I don't think that uh, the Mercedes knows the Ford's there. No, he can't. So he's looking at the BMW. The Ford opportunistically is trying to benefit from what's going on with the Mercedes. Here we go again. Afanasiev trying to get to the outside of Ricardo Zonta as they come into turn one. There's more rubbing between the two of them. Afanasiev can't quite make it. Zonta holds on. He certainly did. I mean, this is good, hard. I mean, almost, uh, well, it's aggressive and uh, entertaining. And uh, it's one sort, twice virtually in one lap, they've been side by side rubbing paint. Afanasiev has actually received a black and white warning flag, I presume, for that manoeuvre of pushing uh, Mateusz Stump onto the grass. And oh, oh that's a rude oh, manoeuvre from Afanasiev. That's pretty. Oh, oh and there now we go. Zonta gets him back. Afanasiev is off, and Sergio Jimenez watches on. Afanasiev may be able to get out of there, may not. We'll wait and see. But all this has allowed Mateusz Stumpf past. Here comes Stefano Telly now to try and join the party and make up a few places in the Audi. We're on board with him. He's in the middle of a three-car sandwich coming down into seven. And he has to settle in behind the Lamborghini. But Zonta has lost four positions there. Well, let's have a look at it again. Well, that's a touring car move, that is. Yeah, I mean, it's, actually, it's more like you see in this game of snooker than anything else, because Ricardo then comes back. He sort of didn't have a lot of options because Agnathias car was coming across the front of the BMW, and Jimenez looks at it, and he noses and tails the car. Karun Chandok, who we're on board with, and who we're now in the grass with. He got hit, he got put down the back. He, was, he, he could see his hand as Frank Stippler possibly was... The car behind him as they came across the line the last lap. Clearly, Karun Chandra got a almighty whack in the rear of that SLS Mercedes. And you can see the back of that car. Now, now, has he got suspension damage, or is that just simply because he was off track and on the grass? Well, welcome to enclosed car racing. Ford oh, off. That's the, that's the number eight Ford, though. That's the second one, which is driven by Rigen Mascarello. He's beached it in the gravel. So, on board with Sebastian Loeb. The gap between them comes down again to under half a second. So this is going to be, uh, well, it has been a very impressive drive from Nicky Mermanov, who, in all uh, senses of the word, both in categorization and in the way he enters, is an amateur, but he's driving very professionally this afternoon. So Stippler, Zonta and Chanduk have all come into the pits to hand over to their second driver. There is Frank Stippler. He's handed over now to Edward Sandstrom and the WRT squad. Very happy with that because I think they've come out in front. And here is Kaka Bueno now coming under pressure from Andreas Zuba. How long will it be before Zuba comes in to hand over to Parisi? Vanthor gets in, plugs into the radio, and Otelli puts his belts on for him. Yep, now that's what the co driver or the drivers do. They share the, not the easy, workload. Not easy to get into these cars, are they? Looking towards the inside line, and this should be job done for Alex Buncombe. We look at the Lamborghini and the this Ford. Mateusz Stumpf and Dominic Bauman. And they're battling over seventh place. Neither of them have made their pit stop. And Stumpf is in that seventh place ahead of Bauman, but then he loses it. Just on throttle on the exit of the corner, just too greedy. Maybe caught the edge of the kerb. Different levels of grip between the racetrack and the curbing. And around she went, and there is. In comes Sebastian yep. Loeb into the pit lane as if the weekend couldn't get worse for the sister car. A drive-through penalty has been given to Mike Parisi and Andreas Zuba for not respecting their start position, which is a real shame for them after a great race. But this is the crucial pit stop then, Alvaro Perrin taking over from Sebastian Loeb. Yesterday, when these two came into the pits, their total pit stop time for the number nine car was 48.611 seconds compared to 43.3 for the WRT squad. Sebastian Loeb explains his stint, and um, yeah, he did a good job. The difficulty is now, though, isn't it? Because uh, Alvaro Parent is going out, very experienced driver, very good racer, but he's not going to know where the grip is on this circuit, whilst Mayor Mounoff is out there knowing exactly how to push, exactly where he can push, and he's, he's coming he's into in. the pits now. Oh, close to that white line, but I think he got away with it. He did. He, he, was, he, was, uh, he was on the right side of the white line. So this is going to be the key pit stop, the crucial driver change, get wheels off, wheels on. 
and uh, I just see what Rennie Rass, who is absolutely stunning, but a great job done by Nicky Meyer Mellenhoff and uh, put pressure all the way through the first the half of this race. They've got a problem, they've got a problem, they haven't, Meyer Mellenhoff hasn't lowered the car, I don't or turned off the engine or something. There was some drama at the rear right. The men were shouting. So whether he hadn't killed the engine, one of them had to go in and turn the engine off. I, I, I presume because the engine cannot be running when, you've made the, when you're when making you're the pit stops. Correct. So here comes Alvaro Parent. This could make this very close indeed. They got the rear left going. It's a problem. It's not coming off easily. And that's cost time. Audi have lost a bunch of time. Cars now. Away goes Rene Rast as... Alvaro Parent comes down the pit straight then, and I think Parent is going to take this one. A WRT are quite a long way down the pit lane. It's going to be so close, but here comes Alvaro Parent to move into the lead of the race. No! Rene Rast holds on! Rene Rast holds well, on! But Parent's going to know where the grip is. Rast going to the right. Parent's got to go to the left. Can he have enough speed in the straight to go the long way round? Rast is going to be late in the brakes as he was in the dry on Sunday, and he's maintained the position. And Parent's going to have to get out of it. It's Groundhog Day for Alvaro Parent, isn't it? He he thought he might have a bit of clear air to drive in today, but instead he's been put out right behind Rene Rast, where he spent most of yesterday. So the, perhaps the advantage for Parent is that in the wet the grip is in different places. So whereas yesterday he could only really make a traditional attack for the overtake, here, you know, the, out, around the outside might be a little more doable because of the way that the track works in the wet. I mean, basically, in these conditions, you're fighting grip, whether it's inside, outside, or the middle. You then get a, a, an extremely competitive and combative component like Rennie Raz, who knows exactly what he needs to do to make that Audi appear to be three times as wide as it actually is. Absolutely. So the Sebastian Loeb Racing Squad and WRT are both going to be absolutely glued to this. The pit stop window will close in a minute. Uh, everyone has made their pit stops now. No real changes in the top uh, four or five. Mateus Stump is up to fifth place. No sense from us over to fourth place, actually, as we go on board with Alvaro Perrin. We'll give you a full rundown of the order in a few moments. Time! Contact. And there's contact! Rene Rast is sent spinning! Alvaro Perrin lifts his hand to say sorry. What's he going to do? Is he? What's he going to do now? Well, he's got damage to the left front of the McLaren, but what occurred was that Rene Rast was slightly wider entering into the exit of turn four. Alvaro Perrin was quicker, and he got the nose of the car down the inside of the Audi, closed the door, and bang! into the back of the Audi. Damage to the front, you can see the damage to the front of the McLaren. Is he going to have a puncture? Is there bodywork damage? Is that car secure? Or will Alvaro Parent have to make it into the pits? And let's see it again. Well, look, watch, watch Parent saying I'm sorry. No, no, well. forget about that. Look how wide we're looking at Rene Rast. Parent is on the inside. It's a closing gap. Parent didn't think he's doing anything wrong, but it was inevitable. All he could have done was lift it off and ensure the contact didn't happen, but he didn't lift off sufficiently. The contact occurred, and now number 9 and 12 cars are under investigation, and the team manager of car 9 has been required to go immediately to race director. The WRT is still the quickest cars out there. Van Thor goes purple again in sector 1, but watch for the Nissan of Alex Buncombe. Will he peel to the inside and send one up the inside of Alan Coder going into the seven? He will, and he gets the car stopped. Very good to see. But here is the battle between first and second places. Alvaro Perrin in the lead in the number nine. Uh, Sebastian Loeb racing McLaren. Rene Rast behind in the WRT. Belgian Audi Club, R8. Down the back straight they go, and these two are squabbling as well. But better position, though, is back to the lead, we're jumping from first and second to third and fourth. The battle into turn seven, stays with Perrin. The battle for third and fourth may change, because Sundstrom, I thought, was slightly nearer to the back. Oh, Day going into onto the straight, there we go. Day goes to the right, and the Audi has to go to the left, and uh, Stimey's... Oh. Right, literally, so under, the, under the rear guard of that Mercedes-Benz. Again, using the Audi's strength. Here he inside. goes, he's going to barge his way through, splashing through the puddles, and Edward Sandstrom gets past. That cheers Nicky Mayer Mount off up a little bit. Enzo E tries to take advantage, but isn't quite close enough. But a forceful move from Edward Sandstrom. Here's the move again. Right, so the Mercedes in the middle of the road. The Audi sees an opportunity. There's space down the inside. You have to make it for you. There was a rub wheel to wheel, both front and rear. And once the Audi got the ground, then really there was nothing much that Alain Day was able to do about it. Drive through for car number nine. 
Alvaro Parent for releasing belts before the car was stopped. Alvaro Parent, who we're on board with now, the race leader, has to do a drive-through penalty. Well, that's, uh, and that's interesting, but that was Sebastian Loeb who released the belts before the car had stopped. Everybody does that. The difference between loosening them and releasing them. Loeb, Loeb being told now, and well, well, you he know, reacted quite well, didn't he? Yeah, but he's, OK, he's learned. You know, he's the boss. You know, he's got, the buck stops with Sebastian. You know, that's what happens when you're the boss. Into the left-hander comes Alvaro Parent, and he comes into the pits to serve his drive-through penalty. And Rene Ras takes the lead of the race. So, well, I mean, uh, a shame for the race. Yes. But rules are rules, and taking your seatbelt off is possibly the most dangerous thing you can do. Well, what drivers normally do is when they come into the pits, they release the shoulder straps and they use their shoulders to, to loosen the belts up. But what Sebastian Loeb has apparently done is actually released the buckle and then the belts from Spitney comes back but in just Perrin behind comes, Alan Day. Yeah, just behind Alan Day and just in front of Enzo Eid. So that is going to be... Oh, and Enzo Eid gets through. Yeah, so Enzo that's Eid. fifth place now for Perrin. Here's a look at the replay. So we're coming into the pits and yeah. he's undone the buckle. The seatbelt buckle has been undone. The car's still rolling. All done. Been practiced, no but of course that is contravention of the regulations. As I said, you're allowed to loosen the belts by using the shoulder straps, but not to release the buckle. And here comes Lawrence Van Thor up the inside of Alvaro Perrin. So close between the two of them. Almost a repeat of the incident we saw for the lead uh, many laps ago. Car 13 under investigation. Possible overtaking of the yellow flags. That's the Pro Cup leader, Edward Sandstrom. So it's all kicking off here in the stewards room as we come down towards turn seven. It's two by two for third and fifth. Alan Day goes defensive, as does the McLaren behind, but no movement just yet on that front. Fanthor knows if he gets past Parent, then before too long he can attack Eid and Day and be up in second place perhaps, because there's, there's only four minutes to go, so time is very much of the essence for Laurence Fanthor, who was very impressive in his first season of GT racing last year, and is continuing that impressive form today. What a big moment. Yeah, both cars, you can see the McLaren also got a serious twitch on this. Lloyd Van Ford to get up along and inside and through turn four. Oh, he's going to run him off onto the uh, out of room, isn't he? No, Perez stayed in there. It didn't look as though Van Thor had given him enough room. Van Thor will now have the inside line, though, coming through turn six and going down towards the hairpin. And I think Perez backed out of that. No, no he's, he's still not. in there. He can still there. And the McLaren's got better straight line speeds, but surely. Van Thor with the inside line will get the job done under braking. Yes, yes he does. I mean, yeah. Parent did everything he had to do through turn four, through turn five, through turn six. Got slight advantage on the straight, but Lawrence Van Thor was on the inside now. Alvaro Parent looking to come back up the inside into turn nine, then the short run down into turn ten. No space there for the McLaren driver. Look at the speed Van Thor carries around the outside of one, up the inside into two. Beautiful move from Laurence Van Thor. Stefan Otelli and Nicky Mermanov delighted with that. Well, that was a brilliant move. Uh, it was certainly one that there was no prisoner taken. Enzo Weed, who's been battling for third place with the Mercedes Benz. I did mention the lap or two ago, he looked like he'd put himself into a position where he was losing ground to Van Thor. Van Thor now on the final lap looks to make it a podium position to try and get ahead of Day in the Mercedes. So on board with Van Thor, he's currently in fourth place. The car in front is in third. The car in front is a Mercedes driven by Alan Day. Already Van Thor is now third in the Pro Cup class. This will give him third overall and second in Pro Cup. On the brakes, coming down into the turn seven hairpin. Went deep in to try and get the traction out, and he's done it! Fanthor gets past Alan Day! Fanthor up into third position now, two cars past in the space of one lap. Brilliant! Appeared and here comes Enzo E to try and get past Day. No. No, he appeared that almost Alan Day thought last lap, no problem, but Laurent Fanthor was absolutely possessed and got the move, and it was a clean move. And uh, take away now on through the podium. But there's Rene Rass crossing the finish line to take the checkered flag. He wins the race. He and Nicky Mayer Melnoff will be absolutely delighted with that. Second place in the race goes to Edward Sandstrom across the line. Third position is going to be Laurence Van Thor, of course, after a brilliant drive. Laurence Van Thor takes third place, second in Pro Cup. Alan Day fourth, Enzo Eid fifth, Alvaro Perez sixth. 
Seventh place overall is Cesar Campanico, and that's second in the Pro-Am Cup. But look at those guys. Absolutely delighted down there at WRT. But drive of the race, without doubt, goes to Lawrence Van Thor. That was phenomenal. And there, getting out of the car, Lawrence Van Thor and Edward Sandstrom. Sandstrom probably had no idea until just now that, uh, that Van Thor had finished in that third place. So now we can hear from Frank Stippler. Frank, this has been an Audi fest here today, hasn't it? Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, uh, I didn't expect that. We, we started from the, behind, from the rear um, because we had some starter problems yesterday during the pit stop. And uh, I took the first uh, 10 competitors in the first half of the race. And I think uh, the brilliant uh, WRT team uh, took another five and during the pit stop because they were unbelievable fast. And uh, Eddie did the rest, and now we, we are on the podium, and it's uh, much better than expected yesterday. Edward, great drive from Audi. You are a star today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it's easy when you have a good Audi in your hands, and uh, the weather is Scandinavian. Then everything comes together, and I'm really grateful for that. So, well, Go off and enjoy it. Many thanks. Well done. Look at this from Lawrence Van Thor. I told you he was taking lots of speed into one. Managed to go right the way around the outside of Ede, which gave him the inside line for two. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Who is with John? So here's a look at the results. It's in a Belgian Audi Club WRT 1-2-3 with the win going the way of Rene Rast and Nicky Mayer Mounhoff. We also had the HTP Gravity Shrews Mercedes finishing in fourth position. Phoenix Racing in fifth place. Sebastian Loeb Racing. After starting on pole position, Loeb and Parent will be disappointed with sixth place, but still, first race in their championship, not too bad. Carlos Vieira and Cesar Campanico finishing with, in uh, second place in Pro-Am. Alex Buncombe and uh, Lucas Ordonez in eighth place are third in Pro-Am. And uh, Keke Bueno and Alan Coderre finishing in tenth place. After the race, it was found that Nicky Mayer Mounhoff had failed to turn off his engine during his pit stop when he handed over to Rene Rast. As a result, the pair were handed a 30-second time penalty, meaning that third place went to Maximilian Buk and Alan Day. Second place to Stefan Ortelli and that brilliant drive from Laurence Van Thor. And the winners, Frank Stippler and Edward Sandstrom for the Belgian Audi Club. It knocked Mayer Mounhoff and Rast down to seventh overall, but they still managed to hold on to second place in the Pro-Am class. Ordonez and Buncombe were therefore third, with Carlos Vieira and Cesar Campanico winning the Pro-Am class. So a brilliant way to start the season here in Nagaro, and the next round takes place in Belgium in Zolder. We'll see you then.